Dan, thank you so much for joining uh, the Public Work Conference Global this year. Thanks for coming and speaking to me about uh, all things languages and particularly, uh, you know, after a pandemic where things have really changed things, for joining this environment and for um, being part of this conversation about this new world we're now in. So welcome. Thank you. So happy to be here. Yeah. Well, you know, it's 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 cool that you've been to the Polyglot Conference before, so you you know some of the people, you um you're aware of the kind of thing that the Polyglot Conference is, even though you haven't actually spoken at the event. And I mean, I suppose, you know, as an organizer, I see lots and lots of people come through. But your face was familiar to me when I was sort of locked inside during the pandemic. Because um, my daughter discovered TikTok <laughs> and heard about it with her, through her friends. And the story for me was, she said, Dad, did you mind if I installed TikTok? And I said, okay, I've heard of TikTok, but as somebody who's worked in social media and particularly for child safety, it's one of the things I've, I've worked on quite a lot. Um, I said, we'll have to spend some time looking at TikTok together so that we see what it's about, what questions come up, and make sure that you and I are both well equipped for the things that we see and experience through TikTok. We spent, and it was quite a nice bonding experience, actually. We spent maybe an hour a day over, because she wasn't at school and we were both at home. So we spent an hour a day. Uh, just looking at TikTok videos and talking about it and talking about the kind of content we came across and on the FYP. Uh, I set up an account. Sorry? How old is she? She's turned 15 now. So she was okay. 13, nearly 14 at the time. Mm -hmm. And and I, I I so I set up this account and I started looking and then and then once I was convinced that okay we've discussed a lot of things <laughs> on TikTok and, and and what all that means. And we, we, we took that time. Then I, 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 I mean, I trust her. She's got good judgment. I think she can, she can make her own choices, but I think, you know, world's a big place. So um, as a parent, that's my mm -hmm. job to guide and to help and to talk through things properly. So I did that and I, and I, felt quite happy that she she was really quite mature about it and um, was able to move forward and then I started to filter TikTok because obviously there's only so much teenage dancing that one <laughs> -old year old man can, can really stomach and it's it's not for the faint-hearted TikTok in the beginning but I started training TikTok or TikTok trained me I don't know which yeah. way around it is and I started finding content where it was language related. I enjoy other things too. It's not just languages, but a lot of language related people I was following. And your videos started coming up. And I was like, I know, I know this guy. I've seen this guy before. <laughs> and, and I was looking, I was like, wow, he's getting quite a following. Now I've, ex I've, I've shared you, with you my side of this, um, experience and you very quickly actually followed me back even though I wasn't really creating anything and I thought that was very sweet of you so thank you for doing that because um, you, you you gave me a bit of an ego boost <laughs> yeah no my experience was like yeah I think I don't know exactly how I came across I think I saw sometimes I like look at like who my friends that create also or like mutuals that create language content follow and I think like someone you came out like you were like they had just followed you and then I saw your name and I was like oh that's the Richard Simcod and then I just saw follow <laughs> back in the and then I was like oh my god like that's like a big thing like that was a big moment for me I was like the Richard Simcod follows me on on TikTok and yeah it just it kind of was like a milestone of like okay I am like reaching the right audience and like you know I am creating I guess that's kind of why you know I started um I just wanted to like reach I started with like polyglot things um and then I switched mm -hmm. more into linguistics and I think initially I was just like you know having been 
someone who like was watching YouTube of like polyglots, like speaking in like 20 plus languages, mm -hmm. like a teenager and like aspiring to be that, just like thinking that like maybe I can connect with those people through TikTok to my own videos was like, you know, one of the things that I was thinking of when I when I first started. Um, yeah, I mean, because the first few videos I think I saw of you were language related and then the linguistic stuff. And I was like, wow, I was really blown away, but just how much stuff, you know, and the, the stuff you could share on, on TikTok. But you also share psychology stuff. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm fascinated as well by I love science generally. Mm -hmm. So lots and lots of different types of areas of science. And uh, I follow lots of things like that. So I, I really love that you added that to your your channel, and yes. Um, yeah. So actually, how, how is that combination for you? <laughs> yeah. So I'm actually so I have an interesting path because well I don't know if it's interesting but I guess languages have always been kind of like a side thing for me. Um, I so yeah so I mean I'm I'm not a full time creator. I do this as a hobby. Uh, I only post like once a week or something. Uh, I'm mainly doing a PhD in psychology. So that's like my main, you know, occupation, job, and I guess interest because I'm, I guess, academically and like maybe like personally, I'm very interested in like mental health and helping, uh, you know, understand how to treat people better. Um, I also do some advocacy on the side. Um, and then languages have always been like, I think since, so funny again like I I don't think I ever saw the beauty of languages until I participated in these like linguistics olympiads I think you might I think I've seen someone I think I've seen something at the polygon conference on that topic so someone might have spoken mm -hmm. about that but it is like yeah. linguistic puzzle solving things in like competitions for high school students and through those like I participated in the, in the, in the international one and like I met a lot of people and I just like saw the logic of language and that's like what passed like linguistics just like the which which is never taught in schools right like you never as a child you do, or, or as a teenager you need to like go to university to study linguistics but this was kind of like a way to like like just like find features like understand features of different languages through like puzzles and then you know wikipedia is is free so I would always just like Google, like Google stuff and like Wikipedia stuff and be like, oh, like, you know, like different languages have different word orders. Like not everything is like subject, verb, object or like lots of like grammatical quirks. Like Hungarian has like 17 K or I don't know how many, 15 plus cases and like different endings. And so I just like, I just got fascinated by that. And I guess I never decided to like maybe kind of pursue a career in that even though I was considering it like very strongly at every point of my life but it kind of stayed as a like as a hobby and and like that also motivated me to learn languages so it was actually it was the other way around like it's not like I, I only after I saw that languages are like super like logical and make sense and I guess my brain just works like that like it's pretty like I need like structure so only then I was like, wow, this is actually so fascinating to learn these things and like see all these different, like both differences and commonalities between languages. And I think it made it easier to learn as well. So then I like was always studying, like I took some classes, like, you know, Russian, Arabic, um, the Romance language, I'm Romanian. So the Romance languages is mm -hmm. also like that also helped with like seeing the like cognate word and stuff, like seeing the parallels and then making it easier to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, and then, yeah. And then I was always like, you know, I was watching, you know, uh, like people who were, were like, you know, making content on YouTube, for example, like YouTube was like, I aspired to be a YouTuber at some point, but I think like the main thing for me was, it was like such a high bar. It was like, I wanted to like share things with the world, but the effort that seemed to go into making a YouTube video was huge, like, see, or seemed huge. And I mean, I think it is right now. Like people have like super professional setups and like 30 minute videos. And it's just it's like very complicated. Um, I also mm -hmm. like thinking of like blogs and stuff, like writing articles, but then I was like, no one, no one reads, or maybe people do read blogs, but I was like, 
you know, I was like thinking of like my, like maybe my demographic and like people younger than me, you know, like, like, like your daughter, like those mm -hmm. people don't read blogs anymore. So I was like, okay, what do people do? And then TikTok became a thing. And then I saw, you know, people there have started, had started to make like polyglot check was like the first type of video that I saw, you know, like yeah, basically 60 seconds of like, you just like say a sentence in each language. And like you, it's, it's just so impressive because it's like, pure you know it's it looks like it's 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 on par with like dancing videos or like singing videos where someone is just really talented and you're like wow this is like my I mean even though you, maybe it's you know you can there's ways to do that without actually like you it doesn't mean that you speak those languages but it just it looks really <laughs> cool and it's so engaging to like watch them and like then people like comment with like their experience and so that's how I was like okay I saw those and those were like filmed in like the, you know, like in pajamas in your room, like it was such a like low effort that I was like, okay, I think this is when I want to like try, like try to, <laughs> you know, my YouTuber dreams, this is maybe where it's, where it's going and I'm going to try with TikTok. So. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and I mean, the pajamas were a good look for you. I mean, they were. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. And then the psychology, I guess then I was like, well, then at some point so I just started with this but then I was like actually like I kind of want to tie it with my like PhD and I feel like in a way sometimes I, I find myself being like oh I know these things but I'm not like I can I'm not like a you know an academic linguist or someone that like has like super deep knowledge of things so sometimes you know people ask me and I'm like I have to do the research because I don't know so then I was like okay but you know I actually like I have much more like understanding of psychology and like because I'm that's my you know field of study and uh so I was like okay let's try that as well and then it became this kind of combination of things which you know mm -hmm. sometimes makes sense sometimes does. I, I don't know I still I, I still don't know what, what like people think like does it make sense or not but I guess it's just you know I have two very strong interests and I want to share both of them uh, and I think some of them you know some of the videos are, are like more like the, at the intersection about like psycholinguistics like how uh you know like how people think in different like how people think in different languages if that's a thing I've made videos about that kind of that kind of things too so so sometimes they intersect sometimes I do don't but um yeah but I think I think it's just it's such a it, it's it's kind of both these things I think uh and any anything you create on TikTok I think it's just like me like it's still like like amazes me how like how like good the algorithm is at like it just sends your videos to random people and you don't need a following like you don't need to start with anything like you can have like mm -hmm. zero you've your first video you put it out there and it sends gets sent to people and if it's if you know people watch it if people find it engaging then it gets into more and more people and then you end up having a huge reach with like such low effort, I guess. And it's just incredible. Like there's, it's especially for languages, which are such a like social thing, right? Where you're like, e each of us speaks at least one language and like has so much knowledge about the language that they can share. So it becomes a thing of like, you know, I share some things and then I follow all these people who like, you probably follow the same people, like all these like language teachers that are so yes. cool. Like, you know, there's like, I think I have like, like Thai, Chinese, like Mandarin, Spanish, Italian, like all, like just so many, so many, like basically every language you can find a, uh -huh. a person who makes TikToks about that language. And it's so cool because like, I like, it, it helps, like it helps even with learning. So even from like, even if you just don't create anything and you just like follow people, you, you I feel like there's so much like so much helpful content for learning languages out there on TikTok, and it just reaches you. You just have to like be interested, and you trust the process, trust the algorithm that it will just. Send. I mean, I don't know if you did any active filtering. It sounds like maybe you like click did a more active filtering, but it also like if you just let it let it find your interest, it will probably discover. You know, everyone here, it will probably discover that like they like yeah. languages, and it will start showing them things like that. So yeah. It, it took me about three weeks, I think, of okay. um, before I stopped getting lots of teenagers jumping around in you know, <laughs> different music and different things. I mean, 
you know as, as talented as some of those those kids are it's not necessarily my field of interest yeah. um <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I I don't gravitate towards those kinds of things. Although I can recognize, I mean, I actually really like some of the hairdressing ones that pop up every now and again because I this I know it sounds crazy, right? But some of the style videos or the makeup artists just blow me away. So good. Um, right, but, yeah. yeah, some of them are just really really impressive. Like the things that they can create are just amazing. So I can appreciate all of those uh, in their own right. I think also the thing is as well that on TikTok, sometimes the language that you follow is not to do with the language necessarily. It's the it's the communication tool. So I follow people who create cookery videos in Italian and Spanish oh, and that's, different that's languages as well. And that I find really, really nice. Yeah. And it's it's different topics just through the language, which I also find interesting. That's but one thing you 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 did mention obviously with your interest in psychology and your studying you're doing your phd in psychological um areas now it's it is a good crossover point with language and over the pandemic i think i've realized just how how important it is to understand one's own mental health yeah. and where we are not just for mental health reasons but for study reasons i mean I think the thing with mental health is, um, yeah, I mean, we do hear for a lot of reasons why it's important. From a study point of view, only if we take everything else out of the equation, which I mean, I'm not doing that because I don't think it's important. I'm doing it just because well, I, I focus mainly on language learning. Mm -hmm. And so if I focus on my area, which is language learning and uh, encouraging people, many of the conversations I've had with my language learning therapy groups and the questions that I get on my lives that I've had on YouTube during the whole pandemic on YouTube and on Instagram, a lot of things come down to uh, how we're doing and what we're doing and why we're doing it. And this is all psychology related and sure. it's not my area of expertise, but at the same time, I can ask questions that help to discover answers and i have found that you know sometimes we our mental health can obscure our field of vision as to what's going on mm -hmm. because how we're feeling and what we're going through sometimes it, it doesn't allow us to to see that and conversations are necessary to to unpick and discover Actually, what what's going on and what really sh may or may not work for us in terms of our learning and mm -hmm. our other interests in life including languages where we may need to make tweaks and changes to make it suit better who we are at a particular time and so this is why i particularly like that you have this combination because i do think that the two marry quite well and yeah so i mean men mentioning mental health and i'd love to hear from you your experience of mental health and learning particularly what what kind of things do you think are important to to consider as an individual when we're talking about these topics with mental health and learning and we see it play out with with some creators in a very public and open way like Lindy, who we spoke to the other day. And I, I really applaud that bravery uh, to, to share. But I'd love to hear from you as a, somebody who's actually studying a PhD in psychology to sort of hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, it's interesting because actually I do study, I never necessarily saw this connection very clearly, but I do actually study, I'm interested in how actually learning of, like affects mental health. So like there's a lot of, theories and like thoughts that actually like you know mental health is like has a lot of to do with our thinking patterns and our cognition and especially like my area is looking specifically at learning and how we you know learn especially about like how we respond and, and learn about like rewards so like good things that happen to us bad things that happen to us um and how we form beliefs about those things and how that actually you know like might underline or 
underlie or, con or contribute to mental health. Um, and actually it's interesting because yeah, like it, like I, I never thought of it to like in terms of, of language learning, but I think that is very interesting because actually it's, it's, it's a similar thing. Like when you learn a language, you basically, you, you, what you're doing when you, for example, in, in speech, right? Like when you, when you try to practice speaking, you try it, you try it, you, you, you put yourself out there and then you get some feedback, which is kind of like that, you know, you get some rewards, some good outcome, bad outcome, and then you respond to it. And that kind of affects how you estimate, like then you, you form beliefs about yourself. It's like, how good am I at this? How bad am I at this? How do I compare? You compare yourself with others. I think like that is actually, it's super interesting. Maybe I'll go in that direction at some point, like as a side thing, because I think language learning is a very clear system that is exactly like that. And I think like, you know, there's thoughts about like, if you have a tendency for depression, you actually are, uh, maybe you don't actually respond as strong to a positive feedback. So maybe you try to learn, you try to say something, uh, you, you, you succeed, like, let's say you're, you're studying Mandarin and you go and like say something in Mandarin and you get praised for it. Maybe if you have a tendency for depression, you don't really it, take that as much into account. You're like, yeah, you know, they praise me, but I'm still, you know, it's not that big of a deal. And then when you actually on the opposite side, when you maybe fail or maybe you, you, you expect to do good and then you do bad, like you can't, you cannot think of the word, then maybe that actually really affects you and that in the future, then you're like, well, I don't want to do this again because I got a bad experience. So I think it's all very interesting. Like it's all very like related. And I think, I don't think we know anything about that, about how, how things, how these two things relate. But I think, yeah, like I, I, I acknowledge like language learning is like a lot of it is about, you know, having that, putting yourself out there, right. Going through these, like, there's all these like things that are like, do I, have the it's 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 also to do a lot with social anxiety right like if you if you're mm -hmm. someone with like that tends to have social anxiety you might find it really hard to like go out there and speak and like initiate a conversation even in your own language and it's even harder in a second language so how are you supposed mm -hmm. to like learn and like or like practice th that language um, or any language you want if you if you generally have this this like tendency so I feel like yeah it's like it it kind of compounds it's such a hard because it's such a like language learning is such a hard task so all these things like I think very strongly interact with it because it's already so hard and demanding like it's like you know it's it's a lot of like it takes a lot of cognitive resources a lot of memory a lot of this like yeah like kind of putting yourself out there like being motivated to like both learn and then like go and practice so I think, yeah, like any, like I think mental health so strongly interacts with that. And I think I, I it would be interesting if like, I'm thinking from like a, a language, a kind of language tutor or like counselor perspective, it would actually be interesting if those people would actually have some training in mental health and actually know, oh, actually there are things from like, you know, therapy, like psychological therapy that actually maybe there's some ideas from there that you can actually apply. Maybe you already do like intuitively, but I think it would be interesting to like, have a um a specific like designed like uh type of like language therapy i guess something like that i don't know if it maybe it exists already maybe i'm talking about something that already exists but yeah well this, this is what i thought of <laughs> so okay, it yeah. didn't, it, it, as far as i was concerned as far as i know it didn't exist and um i decided that there needed to be language learning therapy so I started doing it and um, I didn't know you do this. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, this is what I do. <laughs> so I've been doing it now since January. And um because I recognize that even though my training and background is not in psychology, um what I am good at doing is listening to people and yeah. uh, and and talking people through things. I am good at interviewing as well uh -huh. in terms of some of my training is in interviewing and listening for details and yeah. picking up on things and exploring things so a lot of it is to do with that and and then thinking of ways around that work and sometimes the answer is not immediate but I don't think in any field an answer is always no. 100% immediate I think no. it's trial and error for many things in life and um, and, and and so 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's really nice to sort of get confirmation back from you and to see your excitement uh, with this yeah. idea because it, it it indicates to me that it feels like it really is on the right track. Um, but I mean, that's a secondary <laughs> a secondary thing for me from this uh, from from this interview, really. Uh, but there were there were some things that you said there, and um, you know, I, I do notice that a number of language learning uh, software and uh, courses and things will rely on psychological tricks maybe you can call them tricks and I'm, I'm not sure if that would be an appropriate piece of terminology but it feels a bit like psychological tricks yeah <laughs> um of of reward and uh, and sometimes carrot and stick actually so you know um you know, the, a, a certain green owl will cry in your inbox because you have lost a streak or you're about to lose a streak or I don't know. Or that same, you know, friend might come and sort of give you uh, an icon with it being on fire because you're on fire for getting a streak and <laughs> the reward is there as well. And, and, and I don't and, know because I what I would be interested in it's no it's interesting to know that that's not something that's particularly being focused on, but I think there would be some really interesting studies that could be made where you would analyze data from, and you would have large groups of people who follow those kinds of software, how they feel while they're doing it, monitoring them as individuals, but also monitoring how they feel if they've succeeded and not succeeded with their studies are they actually happy at the end with what they've achieved and how does that differ based on the type of person they are what sort of other things they've got going on there are so many variables you can add into the mix yeah. but it would be super super cool and yeah. interesting i'm i'm looking i cannot find the reactions I, I i wanted to put like a heart you know the heart reaction on zoom because uh, like you literally just described my so i have a new kind of study that it's trying to do that with social media also okay. makes a lot of sense for for me but actually like while you were saying this or like why while you were saying the previous thing I was actually thinking oh when we were talking about Duolingo I was like wait you can do the same with Duolingo data for sure like I'm trying to like collect like social media data and like yeah exactly like personality mental health like measures um mm -hmm. and like look exactly like this exactly this kind of thing and uh, yeah, I, it was just it's just really interesting because I don't know if Duolingo has any like public or like if they would make their data available, but if they would, that would be awesome. Because yeah, I think it's as you're saying, it's 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 both like about fundamentally like how how learning and mental health interact, but also specifically like in terms of language learning, you could actually use if you understood these things, you could maybe tailor like mm -hmm. we can make better apps and better like approaches to like be even more effective with language learning and be more personalized to like what each individual um needs and like yeah so i think yeah like i i i'm gonna look into this i'm gonna look into this if it's possible and uh but yeah i'm super super excited about that <laughs> um, that makes me very happy i would look i'd love to see data on this and i'd love to see what, what kind of things come out of more structured stud uh, surveys and studies and uh because you know my own my own experience or my own thoughts on it are are, my, are exactly that my own thoughts and and people often ask me for a, a verdict on um Duolingo or any other type of language learning app and i'm always reluctant to give a final version a verdict on anything because i'm very much more of the sort of the scientific mindset of i, I don't have all the data to make a, a final uh, verdict so I can't but what I can do is give you my my subjective opinions yeah. and I would hope that I would taper and tailor them to be measured in in a way that uh, will annoy Gen Z to uh, the nth degree because <laughs> <laughs> on TikTok all they ever want is a, a 30 second video with a question and an answer <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> all I all, all I ever get on any of my videos on TikTok is, bruh, get to the point. <laughs> oh, that's all I said. Although sometimes <laughs> that's a trick to like make people watch. If it's like, if it's if if they really want to know the answer, if you give it at the end, then it's like then that like makes your because part of 
how TikTok decides whether your video becomes viral or not is based on watch time. So the more they watch, the more people you make people watch to like get to the end to find out the answer, then it's like the better for your videos. So yeah. I also wanted to say, like, if people wanted to, I don't know if you want to open it up for questions already, but as we're talking, yeah, the maybe question, people, what, yeah. So the Q and A box is open, so anyone can ask questions whenever they want. And um, what we'll do is we'll weave them into the conversation as we go along. Okay. I I tend to uh, make it quite relaxed, um, yeah. so uh, I've done a few of these Q and A sessions and. And they work quite well where where people can put questions in as they occur to them. And if they don't, well, I, I have plenty of questions. That yeah. I want. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think um so so yeah, so and yeah, I'm happy to chat more about like also with the what you were saying. So what you're doing now with like, like the, this kind of language therapy, you know, if you're curious, like if you want to know more about like I don't know what kind of tricks as you said like are used in like mental health like therapies for mental health then mm -hmm. you know we can chat more offline about that and i can um cool. like if you're interested in like resources and stuff i think there's some things that, that i could really yeah well, that would be very up. very nice thank you so much um uh, yeah i'd be very very happy to explore more of that um the, definitely with uh the therapy sessions that i've been running since say january i think it's been um, things that come up again and again is um, people's feelings of not feeling adequate mm -hmm. um, where and I think a lot of it is to do with an education system that is mirrored in many countries around the world mm -hmm. where it's very rigid we mm -hmm. we enter into an education system we mm -hmm. we learn something we sit an exam we move to the next topic mm -hmm. and um uh, it's it's not really necessary that we learn, but we yeah. we pass the exam and that's kind of it. So that's one issue that we have. And that issue, as far as language learning is related, it doesn't fit and match what language learning is about. Because language learning is kind of unique in terms of a topic from what we learn at school. Because right. with with almost any other subject you can allow elements of your knowledge at the beginning of your studies to, to kind of weaken a little bit and you can reference back, you can read up on things, check things. You can't do that with a language. You can't forget the verb ser and estar in Spanish yeah. and, and still carry on a coherent conversation right. in the same way because it gets really messy really quickly. And the people have that are listening to you have a very strong reaction of your making those kinds of mistakes, but then talking about the theory of relativity. Um, it, 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 the two things clash, right? Mm -hmm. So you always have to carry this base knowledge of language with you as you move with your language learning. And okay, some, some etherical topics, you may lose certain elements of vocabulary, but that's more forgivable than learning the base core language itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's one way that language is different. And I think when we're learning languages in a system where we're allowed to do just the exam pass and fail or fail and move on, this is one, one thing I find affects people. The other thing I find affects people is that um, what we do at school and what we do when we're studying for an exam often is we give up everything we cram everything into our brains mm. for the purpose of passing the exam. Yeah. And if we pass the exam or if we fail, there are two different outcomes. We fail the exam, we fail the exam, but then we may feel different ways about that. But if we pass the exam, very often there is a danger that people don't perceive. And that is that we set the bar of what we can do here. Mm. And we say, this is what I can do when I actually focus and concentrate. Mm -hmm. And then what happens over time as we leave school, we believe that this bar lowers down further and further until we expect that to be our norm. Mm -hmm. But we forgot, we've forgotten everything we did and gave up and focused on to get to achieve that really high level. And all of a sudden, this is our norm. And what we're normally doing feels even subpar, sub 
average because we're not doing what we can normally do. And I think that is one element that I've noticed over the years where I, I see learners say, oh, I'm not good anymore. I used to be, I used to be. Able, I, and it's always the in, in the past tense. I used to be able to do this. And when I was younger and if only this and if only that, and now I've got all these other things going on. Well, you did have other things going on then as well. It's just that your memory looks at things with rose tinted glasses and you look back and for sure you almost imagine a different reality than what the reality actually was does that fit into any of the stuff that you read about and study that put that sort of perception from my side yeah it, a bit so i'm not so I, I know there's some literature on yeah like so the the idea of like self like what is the self and how how do we make these like self evaluations is like there's a lot of literature on it. I think there is some specifically uh, to do with like how we, yeah, how we compare, like we evaluate based on like our past self. So it's like, it's not, there's like different ways. Like one is like the simplest is like social comparison. We compare ourselves with like people around us in the present. Like we just take whatever we see around us. Um, but there's one that's, yeah, even more like, I guess a bit more complex, which which is like, you think about oh like how was I in the past and am I better or worse than that and I think like in general people report that they're better overall but it's interesting that like in this particular setting it seems like yeah people I, I have the same experience I think with like learning exactly because in school like all your effort is put into like this sort of like structured learning that then later in your life you just don't have as much time for it or like you're just I guess yeah it's also like a training like part of like saying oh I'm worse than I was is probably true because in school you do this for like eight like you do this for I don't know how many subjects for like I don't know how many hours per week like that's your full-time job you just learn in a structured way and then as an adult also true. you do that like kind of on the side like with languages mm -hmm. maybe with some other things like I think for me it's yeah the main the, even even in my like PhD I don't really learn anything structured anymore like that I think the only time I need to do that is when I want to learn a language so it seems like that's that's the thing that like we we just like lose kind of skill of as we, we just yeah we we had this like good um ev evaluation of ourselves in the past based on like we were doing this all the time it was it felt like very familiar and now it's just mm -hmm. like yeah I mean we it feels weird because you're like I don't know you have a job and then like in the evening I don't know I was taking like evening classes at some point right and like I would like have to like disconnect from like the, the whatever I was doing before and then like do structured learning and then do fit in like homework and your busy schedule that isn't like everything else mm -hmm. isn't structured learning so it's just like I think it makes sense that people feel that way and yeah and also like I mean there there is like I guess it's probably fair to say like I mean if it's someone like more elderly you can also like there's probably also some sort of cognitive component of like oh my memory isn't actually as good as it was but actually that's like that's like only like if you're like like old you know like not I think that there's a misconception that if you're like 30 you're already like you have cognitive decline which is or 40 or which is not true like you can <laughs> learn languages as a like and you can learn them even like you know learn them all throughout your life but I think yeah like the main thing isn't this like that actually your ability declines it's that you're just like not trained anymore you're like yeah yeah and uh, you know this is um the, the one thing that you mentioned there actually as well is you know full-time education versus you've got a job you've got a family you've got friends you've got other hobbies that you do uh how many hours you're putting into it what you're doing and this is something else that i i also see it, uh, people and there's a question about competitiveness and i want to link to that second in a second but i want to sort of link it with this first of all competitiveness with yourself because it feels like there's a competitiveness with a former you a former you that you then what you do is whether you're you're doing this with yourself or with other people 
um, externally, you're competing on an unfair playing field because you don't evaluate what your reality is and what's happening in your life compared to what's happening in their lives or what was happening in your life if the competitiveness is against yourself exactly what yeah. your life was like back then so we need to evaluate what's going on for all of these people right and that can that can include mental health that can yeah. include physical sickness as well you know you're yeah, actually sure. you've caught the flu <laughs> or covid or whatever you've caught you can have so many reasons why um these things change and your ability to do it and i think the education system gets us in this mindset of yeah i need i need to catch up and that adds additional stress and makes the situation even worse so we go through this we see that we're not performing to the same level as somebody else or ourselves in the past but instead of giving ourselves a break very often i see learners not want to continue because they feel very disheartened they try and catch up and they add so much more stress that they make themselves really really sick with it and it, it really affects them um is this something for example is there a way of turning off this competitiveness is there a way of dealing with this in a in a healthy way whether it's competing against other people who are just over the top competitive and you're feeling really bothered by it like a anonymous attendee comments in here um or is it is it you know is it just a hard slog have you got any any thoughts or tricks or yeah i mean i think what you said is like very very on point that you want to like instead of taking them as a like like simple signal of oh they're dig they're just me but better you have to take into account all the differences between like maybe where they come from, where you come from. And like, yeah, maybe like, I think just taking integrating more things and being like, well, okay, they might be better at this, but you know, they might've had like more, like they, they might have like more opportunities to like take lessons and like, you know, pay for like tutoring and stuff like that. Um, one example like they might maybe exactly as you said like maybe you know if you've had a period of bad mental health you shouldn't well, well that's that's a that's a completely in a in an ideal society that would be a completely that would be on par with like physical health you know if you were like in bed hospital if you were in bed because you like had a flu you wouldn't hold yourself accountable for not Learn, like for not being productive for that week when you had or when you had COVID right I mean I, I don't know I, I think people don't do that but if people are depressed they hold themselves they think it's their fault that they're not catching up so I think like thinking of that is like well that's just my situation and I've been not well so I could not be as competitive as this I could not do as much in this period as they could do and yeah, and I think like focusing on like your own journey, like, I mean, mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's an argument in psychology that social comparison is useful, is adaptive, like we do it for a reason, it's useful for us, because we also like to do the other type of social comparison, which is downward. So there's, it's upward mm -hmm. when we look at someone that's better than us, it's downward when we look at someone that we perceive as worse, and we like to do that to feel yeah. better, right? And we don't like to look up, but I mean, I like ideally, like the I guess the ideal thing is to just not because to just not do any of this because it's really hard to compare your own journey with them. There's so many variables playing into account. And I think like I yeah, my own the way I approach it is very much like when I feel like, oh, I'm like so competitive, like I feel so envious on this person. I'm just like, you know. I have my own journey and I'm going to use this instead of being envious. I'm going to use this as motivation. I turn, I'm turning that envy into admiration. I admired them and let's see, are, do they do something? Do they have any strategy or anything? Is there anything that I can learn from them basically instead of like, okay, I just, I cannot, you're, this is like toxic and I cannot stand you like, just, okay. I acknowledge that, you're doing better right now i'm not feeling bad about it because you might there's other things going on and i cannot compare fairly between us 
And I'm just wondering, okay, is there anything that I can learn from you? Maybe you did something, maybe you like learned a strategy from someone else or from some source that just worked for you. And I didn't have that strategy because I didn't, I don't know, I just didn't come across it or I, I wasn't as lucky. And I just want to like better myself through these people. So I think, yeah, like a lot of like in competitive places, like basically like the more, like if you go to competitive places, there's always this like, okay, I'm, it's worse for my mental health if you see it as like a competition, but if you see it as like, these are all really good people, like here, you know, these are all polyglots, really smart people that learn languages. Instead of me being like, well, I, they learn, they know more languages than me, they're better than me. I'm going to be like, well, what can I learn from these people to better myself and like be in my own journey? So I think that's, I think that's how I would approach it. I think, I'm not sure if, again, this is, this is kind of anecdotal. I don't know exactly what the literature is here or any like science behind it because it's not exactly my field, but I would think that like I would, my hypothesis is that if some, if someone tried to do this in a like setting and like tested the effects and it would have positive effects, like a, yeah. a strategy like this, I think, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's, um, that's my lo slightly long answer. <laughs> It's a good answer. It actually fits in well with the comment that we got from Hadron because uh, she's also said that she finds that language learning for her is the opposite. It's actually a motivational thing, and it's the thing that keeps her healthy and keeps her motivated, keeps her keeps her driving forwards, which I think is is the experience of a number of people too. Um, the interesting thing with with the language learning community and like many communities is that it's a really mixed bag of different people with different drives, motivations. It does make me also consider um, perception. Perception is another thing that's come up again and again over the last couple of years, especially because being online a lot more during the pandemic has really highlighted to me people's perceptions of themselves and of others and how they can get really skewed. Um, and I think because, and I talk about this a little bit on my channel, quite well, I talk about a, li a little bit a lot, actually. Um, <laughs> we've got people, because people tend to put the really best and the really worst of their lives online. Mm -hmm. And the kind of the, 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 the larger bit in between the mundane, the everyday, the ordinary, I guess, isn't really something that people consume in, in great quantities online, because, you know, it's not that interesting for people. Yeah. And if you yourself are not motivated to describe it or to to put it online it shows that probably you wouldn't want to consume it either whereas we do put the really really bad stuff on and we do put the really really good stuff on and um, i think what that does is often also skews our perceptions of what people are achieving and what they're doing and what their lives are like and that also plays into how we then feel about ourselves. Because like you say, people, they look up and look down depending on their perceptions of who else is in their field, right? They will yeah. they will see. And some people will see, for example, I, I could take the, the attitude, okay, well, I'll, I'll never study um, Korean or Japanese or Chinese again and try and get really good at them because there are already many, many people who speak them way better than I do. Now, I could take that position, but if I do, what am I actually achieving with that? If I want to do that? Well, not very much. Yeah. In fact, the people who, who are really, really good at it, I can just admire and get, like you say, get um, motivation from and even talk to them and get help from in getting over certain aspects of the study. And the gradient for when we learn anything particularly languages is it tends to go like this in the beginning and it slowly starts to taper off because as we get better at you know sort of more accurate with the grammar and manipulating the language and we still are always going to have these sort of high level words expressions that we need to learn and everyone's on that trajectory at some in, at some stage if they're still learning actively mm -hmm. and just because somebody's got to a very proficient level doesn't mean they're continuing to move up all the time they could be doing this mm -hmm. you know and they've got to the top of where they want to be or need to be 
and also you may not need or want to be at those levels and yeah goal setting as boring as it sounds and i know people like switch off when they say you hear goal settings but even if you don't have a very specific goal at least agreeing in your head why you need the language is important mm -hmm. um yeah uh yeah i, I mean i i think with learn with i have the same experience as as Hadron with with and and with learning languages and actually like for a while i was struggling a bit in my undergrad with my mental health and actually like it was the exact same thing of i i, I felt like it, other things didn't work like i guess like my the school itself didn't work like i didn't feel very i didn't feel like i was doing very well i didn't feel very rewarded in, in a particular time but then when i was trying to do lang like when i was going and like you know learning russian for example i just felt like i just could see you know i'm getting better uh at something i'm i'm learning something and it's working to some extent like i'm i'm you know i'm getting better i can see like compared to a month ago i'm better so it just it just really like helped to like get those rewards from this source that i could not get from you know my other my main i guess activities so um i think yeah i think that's that's really good i, I think like that's the, you know the healthiest way to use it i guess um if, if you have the luxury of not needing i guess to like a lot of people obviously need to learn languages for work living um if you yeah. just learn it for fun then i think that's the healthiest way to do it it's just like you know i don't have specific goals i just like first i'm just you know i think every time i learn a new word or like a new phrase i just i'm like i'm fascinated by it and i just like take that like that's my reward i've just been you know i've learned something it's amazing i know it i may i might forget it but that doesn't matter i've just learned it and i'm happy about it i think that's yeah. kind of how how it works for me yeah i love it daniel just to sort of wrap up the conversation um daniel has written in here that he also recognizes this comparison that we have of picking things up later things that are even similar with his particular example is with music um picking up the guitar and forgetting how much work was involved and i think that that is definitely you know what i was talking about with when we go for a test and we pass it we remember the result but we don't remember the work we put in mm -hmm. and what we gave up and what we did to mm -hmm. achieve it but we make it almost like feel normal and it's interesting you know with musical instruments i can totally see that comparison daniel thank you for that and it does it takes it takes ages and we do forget because I think the, the, the mind, the human mind is quite interesting in that it, it, it's got its own mechanisms to deal with situations that we're in, right? That we, you know, to whether it was a hard task or something, the, the, it could even be perceived as a trauma or a type of trauma to get through something at some stage in our lives and the brain will tackle it in different ways and whether that's making it feel like it wasn't as big a deal as it was at the time because so it starts to forget the, the more painful <laughs> memories of sure. of putting all that hard work in and staying up late and, yeah. and it sort of blends it into more of a normal experience yeah for sure i mean yeah all of basically <laughs> a lot of our mind and cognition is basically uh it's kind of like a, a trick that works most of the times but sometimes has these like failure modes like it's good to obviously forget bad it's it's, it's good to forget to some extent like you don't want to keep track of everything that won't later be relevant like if you've learned something it's not that important or it, ca it can be like good to not uh use up space remembering details about that because you've already learned it but then that means that like if you learn something similar again then you cannot use all that information because you haven't stored it so it's like you know it's i think yeah the general the general kind of idea is that it's with the things we have the, the ways our minds my minds work and our emotions work and everything is like generally good like it helps us mm -hmm but sometimes it can be bad and that's obviously related to mental health and like periods of bad mental health and yeah. Dan, thank you so, so much for your time, your thoughts, for sharing. And, yeah. Um, yeah, really, really good to see you. And 
yeah, I, I look forward to talking to you again very soon. And um, sure. thanks, yeah. thanks uh, for inviting me. And yeah, uh, if you feel, if any, if anyone is on TikTok, you can, you can find me at Danny's Brain, um, also on Instagram. Uh, and yeah, if, if, any, if people have questions offline, you can also just ask me through those channels. And we should, we should follow up on, on the language therapy stuff. Richard. <laughs> Absolutely. That would be wonderful. I really appreciate it. Yeah, let's talk more. Thank you so much. Take Thank care. So Enjoy the rest of your day and see you soon.